so then this read held an annual general meeting on 31st October. As a unit holder, I attended the AGM to learn more about management plans to grow and improve the financials of Land Lease REIT. This is crucial because it will determine if Land Lease REIT can recover from its share price slump of as much as 25.8% at the lowest point since the release of its FY2023 results. If you're not a fan of Land Lease REIT, then check out my previous video over here where I shared my views about FY2023 results. For this video, I'll highlight my takeaways of the AGM and also consider its recent first quarter FY2024 results in tandem. For its first quarter FY2024 results, then this risk clearing ratio remains at 40.6%. If the $4 million worth of purchase securities are taken into account, this gearing ratio will rise to 51.1% instead. While the perpetual securities are labelled as equity in the list risk classification, the CEO acknowledged that some unit holders would deem it as debt instead. He further added that management is currently comfortable with the gearing ratio being at 40.6%, as it's comparable with other commercial S REITs in the market. If we compare land lease REIT with the likes of Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust and OUE Commercial REIT, this is kind of true as CICT's gearing ratio is at 40.8%, while OUE Commercial REIT's gearing stands at 39.4%. However, it should be noted that both CICT and OUE Commercial REIT has way bigger portfolio sizes of $24.2 billion and $6 billion respectively, as compared to Landis REIT's $3.65 billion portfolio. This means that both CICT and OUE Commercial REIT has more headroom to navigate negative portfolio revaluations as compared to Landis REIT. Thus, if you ask me, I don't think it's good justification to leave your growing limit as it is just because it's comparable to other market peers. To reduce the current gearing ratio, the market generally feels that Land Lease REIT has two options. Number one, do equity fundraising, or number two, to divest some portion of its current portfolio. The fear of equity fundraising is also the most likely reason behind the share price slump since the release of its FY2023 results. During the AGM, Land Lease REIT's CEO unequivocally dismissed any notion of equity fundraising in the near term. He mentioned that the management team is currently prioritizing the optimization of property rental performance while also exploring other options not limited to asset recycling to improve the financial health of Land Lease REIT. That's good news for the market, I guess. He went on to further add that if any asset recycling was to be done, it would most likely be the office buildings in Milan. He informed that while the office buildings are fully leased to Sky Italia, there are still unutilized office space by the tenant. Thus, Land Lease REIT is currently in discussion with the tenant on how to better utilize these untapped office spaces. This includes the possibility of then this REIT taking back one of the three office buildings and managing it by themselves. If the above were to happen, then this REIT CEO mentioned that some asset enhancement has to be done to increase the property valuation before it's being rented out or divested. Personally, I think any asset divestment will not happen in the near term, as the management stance seems to be that they want to maximize the value of property as much as possible, which I think is the right choice to make. However, this also means that the share price will most likely not reach previous prices of mid-60 cents to 70 cents anytime soon. Moving on to the perpetual securities, Landis Reed CEO informed that they will most likely be redeemed on their reset date. This makes sense since the reset rate will most likely be higher than the current perp rates. This could become an issue in FY 2025, as then this street has to both redeem its $2 million worth of 5.25 perpetual securities while also refinancing its $360 million SGD term loan. All in all, with regards to Land Lease REIT's current gearing, I do not expect huge improvements in the near term, and any asset recycling will most likely happen in late FY 2024 or FY 2025. So that's for the gearing portion. Let's now look at Land Lease REIT's recent financial results and what are management plans to grow it. For its first quarter FY2024 results, Landis REIT's retail rental reversion came in at a positive 16.3%. This was roughly in line with what management indicated during the AGM. Landis REIT's CEO mentioned that its current retail tenants are enjoying lower operating costs as compared to pre-COVID levels, and that there is a runway of roughly 20% for operating costs to normalize to pre-COVID levels. 
This is on top of the rental step-ups that Land Street currently has for 96% of its retail leases. He went on to mention that the current rental rates at 303 at Somerset is at the lower band of the market rental range for prime retail malls in the Orchard area. Putting it all together, this means that Land Street has further room for positive retail rental reversions in the near term. In terms of office rental reversions, management expects positive rental reversion to continue mainly due to the 75% CPI pack rental escalation lease for the Sky Complex in Milan. Additionally, management also added that the tenant in Milan is currently paying a rental rate of roughly 200 euros per square meter as compared to the market rate of 320 euros per square meter in the Milan region. As such, due to this attractive rental rate, it's highly unlikely that Sky Italia will exercise the lease break option in 2026. While the opportunities for positive rental reversions are good news, it remains to be seen if it's able to keep up with the rise in finance costs. Based on the first quarter FI 2024 results, this will be hard as interest coverage ratio declined despite the positive rental reversions. Furthermore, the increase in debt costs to 2.94% also highlights the struggles of Land Lease Street in this current high interest rate environment. The increase in debt costs, despite no debt refinancing, is mainly due to Land Lease Street's floating rate loans. Currently, only 61% of Land Lease Street's borrowings are on fixed rates. The remaining 39% are subjected to the prevailing interest rate environment. On whether Land Lease Street will increase the proportion of fixed rate loans, a CEO mentioned that they are currently comfortable with the allocation and it's so useless to actually look into more fixed rate loans in this current interest rate environment. However, he further added that in the future, they'll review it again once interest rate starts falling. For future growth opportunities for rental income, management informed that there's currently 10,200 square feet of unutilized floor area in 303 at Somerset, which then this street will look to unlock in the near term. On a multifunctional event space beside 303 at Somerset, Management expects construction to start soon in the next few months as they are awaiting final venue confirmations and specifications from Live Nation. This means that construction of the multifunctional event space will likely only be completed in mid to late 2025. Hence, do not expect any growth outside in the near term. The positive thing about the multifunctional event space once it is up is that most, if not all, of the future capex courses will be undertaken by Live Nation instead of Land Lease Street. As a whole, I expect Land Lease Street to continue increasing its gross revenue and net property income in the near term. However, as long as it remain in this high interest rate environment, do not expect financials to have huge improvement in the near term and also that DPU will continue to be on a downward trend. So having gone through Land Lease Street's first quarter FI2024 results and its AGM, here are my final thoughts as a current unit holder. Personally, I will just hold on to Land Lease Street right now and look to sell when it hits the 60 cents range. This will be a reduction from my previous targeted selling price of 68.5 cents, mainly due to the data from its first quarter FY2024 results. I also factored in a worst case scenario for full year FY2024 DPU to be at 4 cents. Of course, this could change depending on Land Lease Street's future performance, its management actions, and the interest rate environment. Nevertheless, I do still feel that Land Lease Street has a good property portfolio and if it has patience to hold, there could be an upturn in performance once this high interest rate environment ends. So if you're a current or potential unit holder of Land Lease Street, let me know your thoughts of its future and also its recent financial results in the comments below. As always, if you find really helpful, drop a like on it and subscribe to our channel for more finance related content. With that, I will see you on the next video. Goodbye.